for abundant harvest. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. All right. I want to share some things with you from the Word of God this evening. And we'll leave this place in a little while praying in the power of the Spirit of God. Can you say amen? amen. So stay in, while you're in giving mode, also be in receiving mode. The book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, and then I'll take you to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 1, and then Isaiah chapter 53. I don't know how long our midweek services will stay in the pattern that we're in right now and the way we're doing them. I do know that um, the need is so great. There's so much ignorance to the things of God within our world, within our culture. And there's a lot of ignorance in, in Christian circles where key things are not experienced and not known because they're not talked about. And so it's important to take necessary time to learn. I'm about to do uh, several weeks' worth of teaching at a Bible college in upcoming weeks. And the people that are in my class are paying a tremendous price. They're sacrificing time. They're spending resources. They're doing a lot of things because they want to know something that they do not yet know. And, of course, the class I'm teaching has to do with how to be a better communicator, how to connect. Matter of fact, the, 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 the course class is called Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. And I'll be teaching them with how to connect with people spiritually and what have you. But they're, they're paying a price because they realize you don't get anything for nothing. If you think you do, you've listened to, to too many weird, sad politicians. You don't get anything for nothing. If you don't make an investment, then you're not going to receive anything. Investment matters. Success is not just going to fall out of heaven and land on you. If you invested nothing, you would be too ignorant to know what to do with it. Y'all mighty quiet in this room. But it's so important that, that, that we understand that the price of availability, the price of accessibility, the price of being interruptible, the price of being willing is huge. I wish you'd smile at someone and say, I'm willing to pay that price. Look back and say, because there's greatness in me. Look back and say, and don't you doubt it, it all matters. <laughs> there's a book in that, I'm sure. I'm sure. I just feel like there might be a book in that. Isaiah chapter 1, you there? Thank you. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Remember, Isaiah is the Messianic prophet. Isaiah was given things 700 years before Jesus' entry into this earth physically. And the things he gives us about Jesus are phenomenal. Isaiah 1, verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Let me just elaborate on verse 20 real quick and then move to Isaiah 53. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. What does that mean? The same sword that will deliver you when you choose the opposition of the sword is the sword that will slay you. Because when you are God's enemy to His people, you are his enemy at the highest degree. When you are an enemy of God's plan and God's will, you are an enemy at a high degree. 
but refusing the reasoning time with God that he spoke of in verse 18, and rebellion, which the Bible says is as the sin of witchcraft. So your name don't have to be Samantha, Esmeralda, or whatever these, you know, cute so-called witch shows are about. But when you operate in rebellion, you are operating in real witchcraft. Something to think about. So the sword that could have saved you destroys you because you choose to be the enemy of God. I wish somebody would say, I am a friend of God. <laughs> God. Amen. Ooh, stuff like that don't smarten you up. You've heard the phrase, beauty's on the skin deep, but ugly goes clean to the bone. I'm just telling you, man, if stuff like that don't just don't stir you and wake you up a little bit. You ever heard the phrase dumb and dumber? Or was that a Jim Carrey movie? <laughs> Any, anyhow, Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Now understand, Isaiah's writing this, but he's prophesying more than he realizes. For he, that's Jesus, shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And has a root out of dry ground. And he has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. This is exclusively speaking about a scourged, beaten, tortured Jesus. So that's why there was no beauty. Verse 3. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Verse 18, come now. Here are the admonition. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Notice he didn't say, come and let me only do the talking. You shut up and you listen because what you say don't matter anything. That's not what he said. He said, come now let us reason together, saith the Lord. So reasoning together can only take place with dialogue. God wants us to reason together about topics of redemption. He doesn't want us to sway him toward the carnal side, but he wants us to reason with him about how we can be more effective. I feel the Holy Ghost. He wants us to reason with him of how that we can step into the fullness of our purpose in our time. Because it is certainly our turn now. Amen. He wants us to reason together in order that we can ask the right questions and get the now answers. I don't get bothered by people who ask good questions. Matter of fact, I love good questions. What is a good question? A good question is a question that comes out of thought rather than just out of laziness. I love it when someone asks a question that causes me to stop and say, that is a great question. You see, thinkers don't just ask questions because they don't want to do anything and they want somebody to speed up the process so they don't have to think. People who think, they don't just Focus on the thing that's easy to understand if they were just paying attention. If they begin to think about, well, why this? And what do I do with this? And where does this lead? And what can be accomplished? And the, and the questions get more and more intriguing. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. He's promising redemption. And though... They are red like crimson. I'll make them white like wool. And if you're willing, you'll eat the good and the fat of the land. I, I, I didn't complete that verse. If you're willing and obedient, 
if you're willing and obedient. Isn't that wild? I say this as often as the Lord will let me say it. But he doesn't just say if you're willing, because somebody can hold a gun to you and you'll be willing. But willing and obedient means, no, no I, said, I said that wrongly. I said that backwards. Let me fix it. Thank you, Lord. You can have somebody hold a gun to you, you'll be obedient because you don't want to die or you don't get shot. But when you choose to be willing and obedient toward God, so not only will you comply, but you willingly do it. You gladly do it. Then you will eat the good and the fat of the land. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Now, those things being said, Jesus having put himself in our place as the ultimate sacrifice, suffering our suffering so that we could be free from that suffering, scourged for us so that we might not have to be scourged forever for what we have been and done, beaten for us that we might not have to be abused forever. Betrayed. Left forsaken. I mean, you run the gamut of everything that life can throw at you. And Jesus put himself in our place if we'll make him the, not only Savior, but the Lord of our lives. That is so huge. And we can't just act like, oh yeah, I know. I know, I know. You ever try to talk to somebody and, and you can't get your whole sentence out because they're telling you, I know, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm thinking, no, you don't know. Matter of fact, you don't know much because you're too busy cutting wisdom off. Who do you think you are? I'm not talking about me. I've been in atmospheres where there was way wiser people than me and they were sharing manna and giving life. And they're full of that old night, that old night, uh, excuse me, I know crowd, which is the oh no crowd, really. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Here we are with him. But the, the I know, I know, I know. I'm thinking, somebody give me some Gorilla Glue. Put a seam right there and just mash their lips together. Because it's abundantly apparent that they don't know. How many of you got some stuff in your life you don't know yet? How many of you ready to know? Well, I'm telling you, God's got it. And as we think about all that Jesus did for full scale, say full scale salvation for full-scale salvation in our lives, then the focus that I have for tonight all intertwines and is laced together with these verses. Because I want to share for just a few minutes. This weekend matters for so many reasons and why. Why this weekend matters. And you can put that screen up there if you will. Thank you. Why this weekend matters. Why does it matter so much that the tomb is empty? Jesus could have went to the cross for us and died and not got up. This weekend would not mean anything. Without a resurrection, Jesus failed. If Jesus dies and suffers all that and stays dead, he's just another man with a pocket full of promises and a lot of good words. But Jesus didn't have a lot of good words only. Matter of fact, he spoke as one like no one had ever spoken before. But the great thing about Jesus, which is everything about Jesus, by the way, not only did he speak well, but he acted well, he lived well, he did well, he retreated well, he pursued well. Jesus left the wrong atmospheres and Jesus was in the center of the right atmospheres. Jesus knew when to hold them and he knew when to fold them. Jesus knew when to speak and he knew when to be silent. Y'all in this room with me. This weekend matters for so many reasons. And I'm going to give you just a few of what I believe the Lord dropped in my heart. Broken lives need healing balm. Broken lives need healing balm. When you hear that, those two words combined, broken lives, what goes through your mind? What kind of mental pictures do you have based on those two words? Because with me, I don't only think about a struggling marriage. I don't only think about a struggle with addiction. I don't only think about tangled immorality. 
I think about a lot of things. I think about a broken life that has a lot of ugly symptoms. But there's something at the core of the problem that is way worse than the symptom. You see, worse, worse than the outward immorality or the outward hypocrisy or the outward fakery or whatever it could be. Greed, busybody, I mean, you just whichever. There is a core issue that can only be changed by the power of God. And the way that power of God in that capacity is accessed is by receiving the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. This weekend matters so much because it is one of those few weekends of the year where people that normally are closed-minded and closed-hearted to the gospel and the opportunity to hear it, that they'll come to church, that they'll come to a gathering like this on Easter weekend. And so we must strike while the iron's hot. And we must forget any disappointments in our past where things didn't pan out the way they did. Now listen, I'm, 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 not, I'm not focusing our passions because I can predict to you what everybody's going to do. People are very fickle. People are very fair weather sometimes. People are very inconsistent and rock, you know, up and down, rock and rollish, in and out, and just all kind of things. But remember, we're all people as well. So we could fall right into that. But we want to do like we would do if Jesus was standing in this room tonight. We want to be thinking like and acting like and aiming for and believing for the kind of things that we knew we would get a thousand more times result out of our efforts than before. Not gauging things by the past. Because the devil wants you to be limited and paralyzed by past disappointments. Well, I tried that one time and nothing worked. And I, I tried that one time and nothing worked. I tried that and nothing changed. But that's not the next opportunity. That's what was. And the condition of the human heart that is messed up is the reason why nothing happened. It was, it's not because the gospel wasn't available. It's not because the anointing wasn't available. It is because rebellion and rejection of an opportunity took place. But if a person can rebel and reject, a person can surrender and receive. And that's why we've never had an Easter like Easter 2019. Never had one like it. Never had one more important. Never had one that will be more special. If you don't see it that way, then you're not helping me. You're not helping me as a leader. You're not helping your church. You're not helping yourself either. you got to see it optimistically because pessimism is a devil, I'm just telling you. It's one thing to be constructively critical. It's another thing to be a pessimist. Pessimistic mentality is a devil because the Holy Spirit never leads to pessimism. I'm preaching better than you're letting on. And it's so important that we lay aside and crucify let it die on the altar, pessimism, and with an optimism, because optimism is connected with the spirit of faith that says, this is the time. Now's the time. Change is coming. Breakthrough is coming. Transformations are coming. That goofy family member of my mine is getting saved this weekend. Hallelujah. My friend is coming in this weekend. My marriage is going to get its breakthrough this weekend. Come on, somebody. Lives are going to be changed. Why? Because I'm giving place to a now redemption in Christ. Come now, Jesus said. Let us reason together. When we reason with Jesus, the reasons of Jesus will outweigh any other reason if we're open. Another thing, not only will broken lives that need healing have a chance to get healing balm. Let me say one more thing about healing balm. Healing balm represents healing oil. Look, there'll be a lot of people talking about the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus this weekend. But for the healing balm to flow, there's a whole lot that must be involved. And that's one of the reasons why we're praying and fasting. Because we want God to pour His oil all over this hill, all 
through this place, all through this ministry, so that no person that comes in this place can miss what it's really about. So that no matter what's going on that we can't control, that oil is ready to be poured and that God pours out something through our efforts, because if you don't give God nothing to fill, He won't fill it. Come on now. But we give God something to fill and He fills it and overflows it, because if He fills you, He wants to pour through you. Can you say amen in this room? And they need that healing balm. And broken lives need healing balm. That's one reason why this weekend matters so much. Another is this. This is an interjection point, but throw out the stats and see the potential. Throw out the stats because the statistics are not encouraging. The stats. Well, you know how people are. They come to church on an Easter. And they'll, at an invitation, they'll raise their hand, they'll acknowledge that they're lost. And they may pray a prayer, they may say they made a decision, or they may come forward, or they may not. And you know, I don't see why the reason for the big fuss and the big hoopla, because they're not going to last anyway. If you listen to statistics, you can get discouraged. But statistics have to do, in that situation, with people who had a moment where the, they were open to the gospel. I'm not, I believe it was a God thing. But they weren't willing to make Jesus Lord. And if you're not willing to make Jesus Lord, no matter how saved you say you are, you have cut the heart out of the true gospel. And that's why people... Don't connect, but kaflui on those statistics because they don't matter. Let's see the potential. When I look at that tomb, you know what I see? I see it from the inside out, not the outside in. Have you noticed that on the picture? From the inside out. Looking outside, the stone's been rolled away. There's light. There's victory. We have an opportunity before us to set captives free. Could it be that this weekend we see people come to Christ that we have been believing for for so long and we're almost blown away when we see it happen? Could it be this weekend we're backsliders, hard-hearted, callous, hard heart? I said that. Bitter, tormented, just go on and on and on. I'm just, I'm down on the church. And they're down on the church because of what somebody in the church did, not because of what Jesus did, not because of what the real church is about, or maybe what, by what they perceived. And they might have been wrong. But when you're full of you, you will find a way to give place to the devil. Full of you people do that on a regular basis. But this could be the weekend where those kind of messed up folk get transformed. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I believe, I believe they'll be some of the greatest Christians. Because when they get that old stinking devilish spirit off of them, can you imagine what they're going to do when they give free in the Holy Ghost? Are y'all back there? I need to throw something at you. <laughs> I thought you were. A oh, one stat, though. No, there is one stat, though, that I don't want you to throw out. Throughout the negative ones about Easter and Mother's Day. Hold on to this one. Nearly 80% of people say, that's what they say. Let's take them at the word. That they would consider coming to church if asked and helped. They would consider coming to church if asked and helped. Are you willing, church folk watching by Facebook Live, in this room, are you willing, if you got people commit, committed to come to both services, are you willing to be here for both? Are you willing to make an extra sacrifice? It's kind of hard to see it as a sacrifice, but I'm going to call it that. Are you willing to, to do something different rather than just say you want to be evangelistic, but to be evangelistic in this sense that you put people in front of something it's going to reveal something about Jesus to them in a different way than they've ever seen it 
before. Not just by the presentation, but by the now opportunity. Because no time is greater than now. We can't revisit yesterday. We can remember some good things, but we can't go back there. It is gone. And we can't step into tomorrow yet because it's out there. But now is huge. Everyone say, now is big time huge. So if that is the case, based on what statistics say, that 80% of people would come if they were invited and if they were helped, which means maybe being picked up and taken home. I mean, some of you might want to go crazy and say, you know what, I... I'll buy you lunch if you'll come to church with me. You know you're going to eat. You ain't going to fast on Easter. Ain't none of you that saved. <laughs> that, that's, just, that's just the thought. Well, I, I, I can't afford that. Well, something else. I'm pretty sure you can afford it. Yeah. But whatever, 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 realizing that if that is the case, then... What's wrong with us that we, we can do these things if we just don't do them? I think I preach to a lot of people in America that they don't do a lot of things they ought to be doing, even more than doing the wrong things. When you don't do the things you should be doing, those are bad sins. Oh, I think you, you, we justify those sins. But if we don't do the things we should do, and none of us are flawless, but let's don't use that as a cop-out. Let's say, my gosh, man, if, that, if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to use my energy, I'm going to use my influence. Look how God's blessed me. You think I'm going to forget him on Easter? Shoot. I'm going to talk about him. I want to think more about him. Everybody say, this is Passion Week. I want to think more about him. I want to talk more about him. Man, I'm going to talk about Jesus any time during the year. This ought to be one of those times. I'm too busy to talk about Jesus. You're right. You're too busy. Preaching better than you're letting on. Way better than you're letting on. Couldn't get a few grunts out of you, but I meant it. Well, you know, you just can't talk to, to, to anybody about Jesus. Oh, yes, you can. You can live Jesus in front of them. And if you've been living Jesus in front of them, and it's not taken away from your time at work, because you got breaks and you got moments, you may be able to do it while you work. To just share with them about this opportunity, it could change their lives. If that's the case, if it is true, that statistic is, then there's a whole lot of opportunity waiting out there for us to reach. Amen. Say amen, everybody. I heard that. I knew somebody would say everybody, too. You are with me. Amen. Okay. Another thing. We don't have, we're talking about the weekend matters for so many reasons. We don't have time to wait. We don't have time to wait. Time and chance matters. And time in this sense, in that sense of the, what we're talking about tonight, is running out. Have you noticed that none of us are staying the same age? Clock's ticking. Eternity is forever. Now decisions matter. We don't have time to wait. Well, you know, I just this, this, this might not be the right time. If the Holy Spirit is nudging you that this is not the right time, I agree. But if they might think I'm strange is, is what's holding you back, I'm praying you get, get a deliverance from your pride. Because if it's strange to be on fire for Jesus, let me be strange. If it's weird for me to be a passionate follower of Jesus, let me be weird. Because normal ain't working. I want to be a difference maker. I'm going to stop snapping now because I want to. <laughs> I remember one preacher when I was a kid. He, he, was, he, was, he was heaven straight. Forget hell bent. He was heaven straight that he was going to hold people's attention. And you know, people that you know uh, have an attention deficit disorder except the things they like. It's, not hard, it's kind of hard to hold their attention for longer than 10 minutes. And he'd be preaching, go, hey, 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 you, hey. He would do that. 
after I got into ministry, I, I thought he was crazy until I got into ministry, and I thought, I need that whistling, snapping, clapping, throwing stuff. Hey, you, anointing like that. Probably good for you I didn't get it, but he, he, he demanded our attention because he believed what he was talking about was worth talking about. We don't have time to wait. Heaven's for real. So is hell. Jesus is coming. Believe it or not. Life is real. Stuff happens. Suicides happen. Accidents happen. Tragedies happen. Negligence is not an option. I'm just kind of going through a tough time right now. I'm, I don't feel spiritual right now. I'm going through a tough time. I can't invite anybody. It might be the best time. Do it out of your pain. If you're frustrated, if you're disappointed... Do it beyond that. You see, we're not Christ followers when it's easy. We're Christ followers always. So do it in the uncomfortable times, the, the difficult times. Do it in all the times. Because we don't have time to wait. Time and chance matter. And time is running out on people to make decisions. The smallest window of time we have on the planet, excuse me, in eternity, not on the planet, is on the planet, really. The smallest window of time we have is while we're here. I mean, you go to hell, you're going to burn forever. Well, that's about like, what? You said that in 2019. <laughs> Jesus made it clear. You go to heaven, you're going to be with God forever and an eternal assignment. But right now, you've got just a window of time. A hundred years, if, if you live that long, it's like a in eternity. I'm not trying to depress you. I'm just trying to reason with you. Come now. Let us reason together. That our eyes may come open. Because I've already made the wise choice. But now that I am saved, I found out that, not, that I'm not supposed to put it in cruise control and throw my feet up on the sofa and cruise to glory but that I am to make a difference while I'm here and to live a life with a labor of love by choice to reach as many people as I can. These are some reasons why this weekend matters. Let me give you two more things and I'm done. This could be the weekend where long-time prayers and word sowing produces harvest. This could be the weekend where that son says yes to God. This could be the weekend where that rebellious family, all of them, come to Jesus and receive that new beginning. This could be the weekend where that friend has got such decency about them, but if they died, they're lost. This could be the weekend where those prayers that, like puddles of tears at times, have fallen out of your eyes when you would seek the Lord. Where God honors that fasting. Where God honors that weeping. Where God honors you reading a scripture and they come up before you as you're reading that scripture. And they, their picture comes up in your mind. This could be, this could be the, the weekend where the results of what you've been asking God to do takes place. Well, I don't know when it's ever going to happen. That's very southern, but that stinks. Faith says, this could be the day. Now look, I know we all feel like that last phrase. I don't know why, because frustration sometimes can get huge. But faith says, this could be the day. This could be the weekend. This could be the time. I'm believing for this to be the time. Oh, man, this matters. God, we North American Christians. We've got to wake up out of our slumber and sleep. We can't just be on fire and then cold and frozen. We've got to quit riding this roller coaster ride all over the place. We've got to be more consistent because we want to be. And until you want to be more consistent, you will never be. We must be determined and we must be doing it not because we're counting on somebody to always prime our pump and crank for the water, but to be the kind of people that realize Jesus is counting on me. Somebody was my somebody that reached me. This weekend is a weekend that matters. 
And we get to be some of the oil pourers. We get to be some of those bringing water to dying, thirsty people. It's worth the fasting and the prayer. It's worth all that. Yeah, it's worth it. If I never eat another ribeye, I've eaten enough that took a lot of lies from a lot of cows. <laughs> but you do more in fasting than you do in feasting. And feasting is great, and feasting has its place. Preach about it and you're letting on. Mm -hmm, I sure am. If some of you breathe a little loud, I might be surprised tonight. <laughs> I'm messing with you. A few of you do. Your sedateness does concern me a little bit. I don't know what you're going through. I do know you're here, so I'm not down on you. I'm for you. But if I'm going to lead you, I've got to gouge you a little bit when you need it. And obviously, I feel like God knows what we need way more than Chris Owensby knows what we need. Even though I'm the shepherd, he's the head shepherd. He's the good one. He's, 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 the, he's the man. Stand up, everybody. Let's pray. Let's pray for just a few minutes. We've got about 10 minutes we want to spend in prayer before God. We have already prayed this in the first meeting of prayer, but I want you to raise your hands with me right now. And I want us to thank God for staying back the negative potentials. We've already asked him in the first prayer meeting. I want us to thank God to stay back the potentials of terrible weather tomorrow to stay back the potential damages and hail size and tornadic conditions and floods father in the name of jesus we are your children this is our home it's not just people that don't know you living on this planet but we are your kids on the earth today and through the benefit and the blessing of technology we have some foreknowledge of what is potentially coming our way and so in the mighty name of Jesus, we speak against the negative effects of this weather that's coming up from the southwest. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we, speak, we, we give no place to tornadoes. We pray, dear God, that rain will fall in a moderate amount, that there will not be the baseball-sized hail that could be, that people will not die, that people will not lose their homes. I'm praying that you do something miraculous that the Weather Channel people are saying, I don't understand it. I mean, the conditions were just too right. They were just too ripe. Something has happened beyond what we thought. And Lord, I thank you that you're that kind of somebody God. And Father, we thank you that in the mighty name of Jesus, we, 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 we believe, we believe, we believe, we believe that we'll be praising you Sunday for what you stayed back on Thursday. And we put a down payment praise on it right now. We give you thanks. We give you honor. Come on, give him a shout in this room for taking care of this thing. We speak life and we, we speak peace and we shut down negatives. We pray for our president and the vice president. We pray for the Congress. We pray for the House. We pray for the Senate. We pray that dirty politics will not rule on any, in any party, but that truth will come forth and that right will be done for the sake of the righteous, for the sake of those who want to trust leaders to do what leaders are supposed to do, and that's the right thing, whatever that right thing is. We pray for our mayors. We pray for our governors. We pray for our police chiefs and sheriffs. We pray for those over the fire department, all first responders. We pray for our armed forces. Almighty God, we pray for those in influential places in, in finance, in, 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 in media, in, uh, in the entertainment mountains, the educational mountains, all these mountains of influence. We pray, dear God, that you'll do something mighty in their lives. We thank you, dear God, that you can reach anybody. We thank you that you see those people beyond what they've accomplished. You see their heart. You see their soul. You see their brokenness. You see their need. You see the emptiness of that place that only you can feel. And Lord, we thank you for saving the ones that are lost and anointing the ones that belong to you and that you use them mightily and that you use them greatly in this hour. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift our hearts up to you. We lift up your name. We thank you, dear God, that we believe every need supplied according to your riches and glory. We speak the healing name of Jesus over all these situations. We turn the power loose. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I command sickness and disease to leave people's body. Cancer cells die. Uh, brokenness be healed whatever the, the, the lost conditions be drawn to Christ those that are bound by drugs coming off of addictive behavior in the power of the name of Jesus we declare your might, your power your majesty and your lordship while we're in that vein right now Lorraine Dubard please come to the front I saw myself doing this today I wanted to say, Lorraine, you need to be at church tonight. Because <laughs> I knew, I found out she wasn't feeling well. I found out she's been battling some things. But as a person of faith, she's been battling through those things. But tonight we yoke up with somebody who fights your battles for you, by whose stripes you are and were healed. They told Jesus, mocking him, physician, heal thyself. And he could have. But I love a Jesus who heals physicians too. He had one named Luke who preached the power of the Holy Spirit and gave us the book of Acts and stood by the mighty Apostle Paul. Oh my God. The ram with uplifted hands. I anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. And I command whatever this is that's tried to attach itself to you to get off of you. God so gloriously protects you because you're around all kind of conditions on a regular basis almost all the time. So God's given you a strong immune system and it needs an extra touch. I command infection. I command anything that set itself against her body. Whatever you are, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you for healing power and anointing and authority that's flowing in Lorraine's body right now. That she's being quickened in her mortal body. That strength is coming back to her. That vigor and vitality is coming back to her. That when she lays down to rest, it will not be a struggle, but that she will sleep like a baby. In the name of Jesus, give your beloved special sleep as you promised you would in the Word of God. Wholeness, strength, voice be strong in the name of Jesus. Her mind strong. That, that, that intuitive nature that you give people in this realm, I thank you that it operates at the highest level. And I thank you, dear God, for victory in you in every capacity. Can you shout amen, everybody? We believe she receives. Hallelujah, hallelujah. With uplifted hands right now, get ready to just, just extend your hand outward if you would. Just about five more minutes. We're a little bit over time, but we're praying. Just extend your hands sideways. East and West, Lord, we call those into the kingdom, the lost, the unchurched that need to be in an atmosphere like this. People, dear Lord, that church as usual will not impact them, but church, Holy Ghost, anointed and, and empowered and helped and enabled that need that mighty breakthrough power. We call them in. We don't condemn them. We don't judge them, but we choose to love them and we call them in. We believe that you're drawing them even now by the pulling power of the Holy Ghost. Use our word, use our posts, use our texts, use our conversations. But Lord, I'm asking you to do divine things too. Let there be a divine draw where people see the sign and they gotta be here for the nine or the 1030 service where people hear about it in some supernatural way and they have to be here. Now spin north and south direction. So Father, in the name of Jesus from the north and the south, we call in the lost. We claim them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I have believed from the beginning of this ministry that no less than a tithe of this region, no less than a tenth of this region should be connected with this ministry. I still believe that. In the mighty name of Jesus, we claim their lives in the name of Jesus. We call them out of the dark. We call them into the marvelous light. And we thank you, dear God, that what is about you is greater than what's wrong on their lives. And that you're loosing them. And you will let them go. And you will set them free. 
and they'll step into a brand new world belonging to you. Now with uplifted hands, just thank Him. Thank Him and praise Him and honor Him and glorify Him and magnify Him and exalt Him and extol Him and celebrate Him. I'm talking about Jesus. Do all those things and then some. And I heard the Lord say, He said, just let my people know that if they really want to help themselves, be others minded. Because when you're others minded, I get my eye on you in a different kind of a way. When you're others minded, you don't have to worry about your needs. Because I will busy myself meeting your need. I will supply the need of someone who is busy about my Father's business. The Lord of the harvest is also our healing Lord. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace rested and rests upon Him. By His stripes we are healed. We're healed, are healed. Done deal. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His countenance to shine upon you. May the Lord establish you in all your ways. May you operate as a supernatural witness, especially from here to Sunday. And may you be so blessed as part of the fruit of your reward. You see friends, family members that don't know the Lord, loved ones in this atmosphere. Worst case scenario, the seed of God's love will be released into their heart. Great case scenario, they'll be born again. Best case scenario, they'll get all that, then some, and be locked in and be the kind of people that the devil would have wished he had took him out back when he could because they become a nightmare to the enemy and world changers to this society. So may the Lord bless you and keep you, and may he grant you peace in Jesus' name. I love you big time. God bless you. Give the Lord a hand clap. Love you, Facebook Live. Bless you all.